Good evening, and welcome to, once again, Happenings on the Hill. I have a distinguished guest that I enjoy very, very much, off camera and on camera. I know you recognize her here in Medfield. She's done a tremendous amount of work for people in Medfield. State Representative Denise Garlick. And so, without <clears throat> further ado, it's my pleasure to introduce to you Denise Garlick, State Representative, on a couple of topics that I know you are very interested in. Nice to have you. My pleasure, Jack, as always, as always. At the beginning of a situation that we're constantly in quandary with, and has been going on for a good number of years. Finalization is there, but a question is it? And so I'm going to turn this entirely on over to you, as you know much better than I do about it, State Hospital. Well, thank you. The Medfield State Hospital is, um, issue, I'm glad to report, is percolating along right through the State House because of the work of all of the people of Medfield such a tremendous effort by so many volunteers. Um, the open town meeting unanimous vote to buy that hospital property was one of the most amazing things I've ever witnessed. I have attended numerous town meetings and there is always at least one person who has a concern or needs to have their voice heard. And when Medfield passed by unanimous acclamation, the desire to buy that hospital property. I don't think anything can stop us from seeing that legislation through. I've told that story at the State House and everyone is amazed by it. So we had a unanimous vote from the Board of Selectmen, a unanimous vote from town meeting, an overwhelming vote from the ballot, and now it is for Senator Timothy and I to carry that message through the State House and pass that legislation by July 31st. That's, that's the deadline that the formal sessions end this year for the two-year legislative cycle. Mm -hmm. And so the process to have an idea become a bill and have that bill become a law is pretty arduous. There's 13 steps in that process that you go through in the House, then you repeat that in the Senate, then you go to the governor. But we are moving in that process. And um, Senator Timothy and I, there was a public hearing that we had a member of the Board of Selectmen, um, Pete Peterson, Steve Knowlton, Christine Tretweiler came into the State House. They made uh, their case to the committee, and I'm expecting the committee to vote favorable on that. And then we will see that bill move through steps four and five, which is a second hearing and a third hearing. But we have done a tremendous amount of homework on the House side and on the Senate side, and I am expecting that bill to move and move successfully. Well, you had said, Denise, just a few moments ago, time waits for no one. That's right. And it's running out, and it's the end of July. That's it. Now, after the, once the governor signs it, then the situation falls back to Medfield. Right for the purpose of the property. Mm -hmm. I know that you, and I commend you on it because I know you've worked awfully hard, and I know that Senator Timothy has worked awfully hard. There has been a number of comments, a number of questions, and I get them in the morning when I have my coffee, <laughs> relative to this situation. Because at one time, uh, and you were there at the time, they, we had that special meeting. Mm -hmm. there was, oh, it was a tremendous meeting, tremendous amount of people there. And believe it or not, it only lasted an hour and a half. <laughs> uh, I was talking to Scott about that. But everybody is here right now is very, very anxious. and. One had said to me, oh, I would say probably four or five days ago, is this going to be the hurry up and wait program until it is finalized? I said, well, believe me, there's nothing else you can do. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So how are things progressing right at this moment? So they're moving very well. You know, the, the reason it's so many steps to pass legislation is because those, of course, are the laws that we live by. And so it's frustrating for people to hear that it's a complicated process, but it's what protects us in the end. And for the vast majority of our laws, we want that kind of time and that kind of deliberation. For something like the Medfield State Hospital property, it's equally as arduous because it is the state selling their property. So there's a lot of eyes on, there's, you know, we've taken it to the House of Representatives Council, um, the DCAM commissioner is involved. We want to be sure always that we do that appropriately and that any land that's transferred within the Commonwealth is done in a transparent way. So that, given that, the July 30th, 31st deadline actually becomes our friend because people understand why Senator Timothy and I are pushing so hard. And I am working on this every single day. And when people see me in the State House, they go, I know, I know the Medfield State Hospital property. <laughs> I know, Denise. But that's what it takes. But the date actually gives us some momentum. So I, I would never make a promise I couldn't deliver on, but I would tell you that I am very confident we're going to be able to get this done. You know? Well, then your feeling, because you're right in the middle of it, Right there at the state house, no question about that. We here in Medfield, like Mike Sullivan, the selectmen, and so forth, can do just so much. Mm -hmm. And now it's up to the state. Right. And now it is up to both you and Senator Nimitz. Yeah. Getting the message across is fine, but if you do it repetitiously, it sinks in. Right, right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but I, I feel right at this moment, and maybe somewhat, Denise, a hard question, but what's your opinion of the situation at this moment? So I think that the town of Medfield to be able to buy this property is a tremendous opportunity. You know, I, I am so pleased that the people of Medfield see that opportunity and are ready to take that on. The, for the state, when we went to the public hearing at the State House, the DCAM commissioner was there to let the State House committee know that this proposal had her full support and she was available to answer any questions. But because we had done so much homework on this and the committee was already well versed in this, they had no questions of her other than, do you support this? And she said yes. So I think every party that needs to be involved is working in concert with each other. And Medfield wants this property and the state wants to sell this property. So now we just have to dot every I and cross every T. It reminds me, Jack, of that moment when you've found your dream house, but you haven't signed the purchase and sale yet. And so you think about it constantly until you get that done. And for Senator Timothy and I, that purchase and sale is the legislation, you know, so. You know, to me and to people that I have talked to, they're very, very conscious of the fact that what you, and Senator Timothy are doing. I recall that very large meeting we had on the 10th, the mm -hmm. DCAM lady was right. there. And I know the, the pushing factor, but I, I was hoping, and now that it's clarified that working as hard as one can possibly work to initiate and finalize this, and actually, then that comes up to the 31st day of uh, July, doesn't it? Yeah. But Jack, you are so generous to talk about my work and Senator Timothy's work, but this has been a team sport. And when I think of all the years that the people of Medfield have worked on this, when I think of Ann Thompson back 
you know, in the early 1990s, beginning to talk about this. When I think of the work of um, Bill Massaro and of John Harney, and this Steve Knowlton is just tremendous. When I think of their work and their committee work and the work that Gil Rogers is doing now, and all of these people coming together, all with a piece of the play, and everybody's playing their position, and, and right now Jim and I are playing our position. And, um, but it's only happened because there was a lot of time, a lot of discussion, a lot of deliberation, and a lot of uniting that team to pull in the same direction. That, Denise, is very true. Uh, each one of the members of those committees have worked tremendously hard uh, voicing their opinions, knowing in certain specific areas what they wanted, they had walking tours. Mm -hmm. uh, they've had a number of situations existing during a selectman meeting to voice opinions. And they've all worked very, very hard to accomplish this. Right. And so now that all of that is completed, they're turning it over to you and Senator Timothy for the purpose of executing the situation and finalizing it. Well, it's the last play of the game, and we've got the ball, but I think we're going to take it right over that goal line. I do, Jack. Beautiful. And believe me, by what I hear, they're depending entirely on you and the legislation, both you and Senator Timothy. Yeah. Because it is, it's, it's a plateful, there's no question about it. But they've worked so hard. You know, Mike Sullivan and I have sat here at this anchor desk for a number of years. And every time we've sat, it's the state hospital. Yes, yes, <laughs> I know that, I know every, that. <laughs> every, every, uh, finally why Mike will chuckle you know he said you know i i have my last question mike and he said you don't have to ask me i already know <laughs> <laughs> but uh i feel that as soon as this is initiated there's going to be a tremendous sigh of relief with a lot of people i think so too i think so too any other things you'd like to add relative to the medfield state hospital before we go on to the next subject no, just, just staying on the job, so, yeah. Well, I know, and I, I, I know that the town of Medfield and the people of Medfield, thank you, Denise, and thank Timothy for everything that you're doing now and will continue to do until finalization. Now let's talk about the budget. Mm -hmm. So the state budget, is, in my opinion, it's like a relay race where there's several laps that you have to go through and you keep passing the baton. So the first lap is, comes at the end of January when the governor comes out with his budget. And he publishes his whole budget and he passes the baton to the House of Representatives. And the House of Representatives has to look at the lap that's already been run and decide if we have to run faster someplace, if we have a little breathing room someplace, or how we're gonna run our lap. And the House comes out with their budget, which we just did last week. So I'm so pleased to be here with you. You and I had talked, we'd talked the next time we were doing the budget, and here I am to report back to you. And then the House, when we put out our budget, we pass the baton to the Senate. And they take the baton, and they come out with their budget based on what they've seen from the other two budgets, based on what they think the priorities are and then we negotiate it pretty much through the month of June and come up to the final state budget. And that makes sense to me too um, because it's a $39 billion budget. And I'm doing this thing in Needham right now, Jack, where I go into the eighth grade. We have 18 sections of eighth graders in Needham. And I go into that school 18 times and teach a one hour class every time I go on how a bill becomes a law. But I talk to them about why these 
processes have to be so involved. It's frustrating to people on the outside who'll say, oh, why is there a governor's budget and then a house budget and then a Senate budget? But it's because things change and there's different priorities. And to me, a budget is simply our values put into action. So I'm pleased, really pleased, to report back to the town of Medfield that in this budget, we've increased the um, local aid money, the money that comes back that's unrestricted money that can be used for police and fire and to support you know, public services. That was increased overall by $22.5 million this mm -hmm. year. And that was a real push by the House of Representatives. That's over the governor's budget. And for Medfield, what that means, Jack, is it means that last year, Medfield got about a million two hundred thousand dollars in um, local aid money, and this year there'll be a million, almost three hundred thousand dollars. So that's a good increase for the town, nearly a hundred thousand dollars. The education money, which is the other thing that I always want to report back to Medfield on, is has been increased by a hundred million dollars by the House of Representatives in this session, and that's something that I worked hard on. Well, around no, the education not. money. You might remember that I'm the vice chair of the Joint Committee on Education. So I worked very hard on that money coming back to our districts and what that means to the values that we have in Medfield. And so that increase, last year um, Medfield got about $5,797,000 in education money. And this year from the state, the town of Medfield will get $5,800,000 and $62,000. So that's an important increase when we think that, particularly in Medfield, because there's not a strong commercial base, all of education is supported by the personal property tax, and that's a real burden for folks. So although there's $5.8 million, I know Medfield needs more than that and could use more than that very efficiently, um, it does help. It's important money coming back to the town, and it does help. You know, Denise, today more than ever before, and I know I'll antiquate life, so, mm -hmm. education, but the plateau of education today, as far as I am concerned and people I've talked to, is all very, very technical. Mm -hmm. It isn't the old three R's as it used to be. Right. And you know, being the chairman, the students at Medfield now, I had the opportunity of sitting here at the anchor desk talking with the superintendent, the new superintendent of schools, where you can have an exchange program from China to Medfield High School and exchange students, learn the language of Mandarin, have the youngsters start to understand the high technical factors that are involved, and there are tremendous. You now have cell phones, iPad, you name them. And so now, more than ever before, the student needs as much as he, they, he or she can get. Because now that you enter that outside world, uh, it isn't like it used to be. Mm -hmm. and particularly for Massachusetts, Jack, education is our strong suit. The resource we have is well-educated people. The students of Massachusetts rank number one in the nation, number one in the nation in math and science. And the nation ranks very high in the world. And when you hear that other countries are ranking higher than America, you have to remember in other countries, they pick and choose their students to go on. In America, we open up the doors and we let anyone who wants to study hard work hard for that and through the public school system. And so when we're testing people, we're testing everyone, not just the children that we select. So that we are ranking that high in the world matters, that Massachusetts is number one in the country matters. When we talk about what's happening to the economy, how do we bring jobs to Massachusetts? The jobs we're bringing to Massachusetts are jobs that require brain power. And the companies that come here, they come here because of the people and the education that they have here. So 
whether we're talking about students learning another language and being able to be a more global citizen, or we're talking about science, technology, and math, we are leading the way on that in the country. And that's a tremendous responsibility we have. Well, you know, if you stop for a moment, that's a driving force that's your responsibility. It is, number one, because today, to give you an example, I have a very good friend of mine, and uh, his son is the ripe old age right now of eight years old, <laughs> and he is teaching his father uh, a computer. Yes. So <clears throat> you think, let's multiply that by 10 years. Where are you gonna be in 10 years? Mm -hmm. Education today is not something you take lightly. No. It's essential. Well, the moment that you step into that progressive world today, the requirements are a far cry from what they used to be even five, ten years ago. Oh, I think that's very true. I think, I think we're seeing generations being measured now not from parents to child, but between siblings. There's whole new generations, whole new knowledge. I know that when I was working hard to build my own skills around the computer, I worked with someone who said to me, you know, Denise, people our age are immigrants to the technology world, but our mm. children are natives. They're so intuitive and they're learning with these tools and the world is just wide open to them. And um, I, I was thinking what I wanted to say, Jack, when you were talking about these students too, is any time, any time I hear someone say that, you know, they fear for the future and they don't have hope for the future, I always want them to introduce them to our kids. Because when you meet with our kids and talk to our kids, they're fascinating, they're involved, they're learning things beyond a world we even know, and it always gives me hope. It always gives me hope. You know that statement you just made about somebody, it's an old proverb, and I believe it. My father even <laughs> memorized it when I was small. And he had said, keep your eye upon the donut, not upon the hole. Oh, how wonderful. <laughs> yes, I like that. I like that. I like and that. it's true because today, when a student leaves, graduation day is over, is one of the most beautiful challenges that an individual can get. Mm -hmm. Well, while you're talking about your dad, I'll talk about my Nana. And my Nana was, you know, uh, an, an Irish woman who was living in Dorchester who actually was a cleaning woman at night in the banks. But she always used to say to me, no one can take your education away from you. Keep going to school, keep learning. Nobody can take that away from you. And that's true, Denise. Yeah. A good education today, that is better than all the money in the world because you can utilize it in many, many specific areas mm -hmm. and because in, it's yours. <laughs> and in the state budget, not only were we trying to get money education money back to our local towns, but there's also a lot of resources that we use to support the state university system now and freezing tuition and fees because the opposite of why we know that education is so valuable is that education is so expensive. And I see young people starting out today with tremendous debt from college educations. So in the Commonwealth, we're trying to freeze those tuition and fees to help those kids as they're getting started, to help their families that are trying to help them get started. So we're doing that with our college age kids. We're trying to strengthen the community colleges so they can actually provide education that allows people to move directly into the workforce. And we've also put money into early education because all of the research is telling us that early education is incredibly valuable, more than oh, yeah. I think we understood for many years. Mm. So we've done all three of those things in the state budget. Very, very true. Mm -hmm. You look at it and uh, to some, a lot of snow in my head, uh, the challenge is so technical. Mm 
Mm -hmm. That things are coming out every, not every year, but every day. And to be able to keep up with all this mm -hmm. is quite a task. That's right. That's right. Let's go on. Okay. Uh, Budget-wise, overall, we talked about education. How does it look overall relative to Massachusetts itself? As you may know, here in Medfield, uh, they need a new fire department, mm -hmm. naturally, a police department. And they're working very diligently to acquire though, you know, through, and also uh, they're looking in other specific areas for the betterment. Because if you remember, I, Medfield is growing. And, Medfield is growing. And consequently, mm -hmm. they need something a little bit better, that much more than they had before. So budget-wise, how does it look? The reason I ask that is that a couple of people say, well, those taxes are going to be awful high. I don't know. So. so I think one of the things that's a glimmer of hope in all of this is that we are seeing this turnaround in the economy. Now, in the state budget, we didn't address that so much. We didn't build it into the budget yet because we don't have the money in hand. But when you look across the Commonwealth at the amount of building that's going on, um, I know down in the Boston Convention area, I just have recently been told there are five hotels under contract there to be built. One of them is a thousand bed hotel. So when I think of that kind of construction and that kind of building in the Commonwealth, I know that that's good. When we're looking at the real estate market in Medfield and you're seeing things that are selling very quickly now and God knows they're robust prices. So we can see the turnaround in the economy. That's going to help everyone. And the town does have to do take on big projects because we want the town to grow as the number of people in the town grow and as the need grows. But my experience with Medfield has been that they are very thoughtful. And I'm counting on the fact that there'll be a good strategic plan. And the people in Medfield will know what they need to do and when they need to do it and how they can plan for it. And anything that I can do, you know, to be helpful in that process, you know that I'll do that. But um, we have to plan for the future. It's, we have to take care of our, our house. You know, Denise, it's very obvious because the effort that you and Timothy put forth on that hill is very, very important to the people of Medfield. Because the state, and what the state says, and so consequently, the individual can turn and say, well, we've got two excellent representatives Thank you, that do a job for oh. us, and that's so important. It reminds me of an old gentleman that said, you know, education and politics. Well, once you're educated and you have politics, you got a chair and you sit in it, and that's about the extent of it. Oh. <laughs> and I said, well, time, <laughs> and I remember it was said the time has now changed since Grandma had a bowl. Mm. And so the representation that the people of Medfield get lies upon you and Timothy. Mm -hmm. For you are the spokesman of this town. Really? And this town actually is theirs, but they always and constantly want to know where is it going and the only source of information that they can possibly obtain from the selectmen and so forth than right to happenings on the hill. Oh, thank you. So, so believe me, by what I hear, they're very enthusiastic and comfortable that you're there. Well, thank you, Jack. It, it's a privilege to represent Medfield. I'm, I'm proud to represent Medfield. And I think that's one of the things, Jack. You know, I always say to people, I know the headlines can be bad. 
but the capacity to do good in this job is great. And when we're working on issues related to Medfield, on the water tower and pass that That's legislation. That's important, yes. And when, you know, I meet with the superintendent on the education issues and I meet with Mike as the town is looking to the future, those things aren't headlines, but they're the homework that makes our communities our hometowns. And, you know, that's good work. That's good work. That's serving the people. And I want to say, too, that both Senator Timothy and I have the pleasure of welcoming the new representative who's getting his feet on the ground, Sean Dooley, who will represent part of Medfield. And I am working hard right now to make sure that we're all on the same page, that I share anything that I know with him so that you know, two people working hard is good, three people working hard is even better. <laughs> that is so true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I noticed the old clock on the wall, as I usually do, and I wanted to get and have your opinion. Now, I'd like to turn this over to any of your comments or anything that you would like to say before we say good night. Well, I, I would. I would like to continue to say that we will work on the Medfield State Hospital property till we bring that over the goal line and that we will continue to see the budget grow and change as it goes through the Senate and then that final phase. But it will not be less than the money we were able to win for Medfield. We can't lose that money now that we've won in that House budget. So I'm hoping that the Senate will just build on that. And I'm hoping that your good sentiments and your kindness to me and your support is shared by many people because most of the issues that we're working on are about the town and helping the town to be strong. And I think that's the common ground that we all agree on. So true, Denise. Mm. And they do, without question, depend upon you and depend upon Senator Timothy. That's obvious. I hear it. Thank and you. Uh, when I stop and they come over and they say, uh, how's the budget or what's about the state hospital? Well, I have a privilege, I did this morning, that I'll be sitting with the state representative, Denise Garlick, and we'll be discussing it. They'll look forward to it because that's why on television, you can get to the point of what's really going on. Your comments, excellent. Thank you. Your determination, excellent. <laughs> and I'm not painting any flowers, for the truth of the pudding is always in the eating thereof. That's right. That's right. I know. <laughs> Thank you, Denise. Thank you, Jack. Thank you. Thank you. This is Jack Peterson wishing you and yours the very best. And it's been a pleasure sitting with the state representative, Denise Garlick, here on Medfield Television and expressing her opinions, which are mandatory. <laughs> Good night. Hi, I'm Bob McGuire and you're watching Medfield.tv.